You know the saying that you should always work smarter and not harder? Yeah, we didn't do that. Our geese have started to lay eggs, which means they've been more aggressive. And while this small pen was okay for a temporary situation, it's not gonna really work in the long term. Plus, in the meantime, our bucks need a bigger area. So, we came up with a plan. We're gonna combine the two troublemakers into one big pen. The only problem is, we're not really sure if this is going to work. Will the breeding bucks and the geese get along? Well guys, that is the question. I'm really excited to see how dad does. <laughs> oh, uh. all right, let's see how he does. Woo! <laughs> he scooped it. Now the only problem is, can he get it in between the poles? We shall see. It's kind of my fault because I told Dad, "Oh, we don't, we don't need to do dirt." And then after he did the poles, I was like, "Oh, actually, oh, he's got it. That's easy." <laughs> he's gonna dump it over the wall of the neighbors. <laughs> oh, I feel so bad that I had him do the poles first. Oh, that's so perfect. Right there. That's perfect. Oh, wrong way. Yes. Sam, I'm so scared of it. Good job. That was perfect. You know the saying that you should always work smarter and not harder? Yeah, we didn't do that for this project. to play in. Yay. Yay, <laughs> That's pretty good. It's pretty level it considering we didn't drive over it yet. Good job. You only hit the wall one time one. and skimmed the edge oh, of it. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> they won't notice. So we're out here just surveying our, you know, project here and like if we should move more dirt and this blue heron just flew over on top of our roof. Yeah. Salem wants to go get it. You can't tell now, but when it's flying, its, it's wingspan is like eight feet. It wants to get one of the fish. Hopefully they go in the caves. We told Ethan to come outside since he loves birds. Is that crazy? <laughs> That's crazy! Look at how big his mouth is. It could eat one of our fish easy. Well, Kevin got right to work on welding the fence, and luckily he had a little helper with him. So, Luna has been obsessed with getting in the pen. <laughs> so she she's already decided that this buck pen is hers. <laughs> Luna. Do you like being by the bucks? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll see in the footage when I'm when I'm working out here. She's yeah. building her bed. She's digging and she's she's doing it the whole time I was working. You like being over here? You can't be over here. We're gonna let the bucks in here. Luna. Now, we really hesitated moving the geese because we know Esme started laying her eggs, but we had to candle them anyway to see if they've been breeding successfully, so we figured we'll do it really quick and see if we can get it done. 
Nothing, nothing in that one. Nothing in that one. I think the other one was. Go back to that first one, the second one I did. Maybe. Maybe there's a thing in the middle. Yeah, I think that one is. Yes. Maybe. We're supposed to look for veins. But they're kind of dirty, so it's like hard We're to not see. Gonna see veins. Dark spot. It'd have to be bigger because the veins would like. It may be a little too early to tell, or maybe they haven't been breeding very much. But either way, this gives us a good opportunity to quickly move their house over. We corralled the geese into their pen, and that worked fine, but somebody on the farm was pretty bummed about it. Luna's like, that was my pen. <laughs> Sorry, Luna. So the whole family got together <laughs> and moved it across the yard and into the new pen. Ethan carefully put the eggs back and we decided to fill up a nice big tub of water for them to bathe in and settle into their new home. We'll give them a day or so to get used to their new area and then we'll be combining them with the bucks. You doing okay? So Olive is getting closer and getting bigger, but she's doing great. We're checking on her daily. She's just laying around, eating, and waiting out the last week or so until she has her babies. We've prepped the barn and got the barn all cleaned out. We're ready for her now to deliver. We wait for her udder to fill out and then um, we'll have babies soon. It's that time again. So we've been doing our milk testing for our goats and we do this monthly. The lab that we send the milk samples to does test for bacteria, but our main thing that we are testing for is the weight, the fat, and the protein, because these are all indications that your goat has met the minimum breed standards. So for these little goats, the Nigerian dwarfs, this is how we prove out the mothers. This is how we show that they come from good milking lines. You hear that phrase a lot, that this goat comes from good milking lines, but what do the records show? And that's why we're doing milk testing. It was sort of a headache to figure out and set up, but now that we're set up for it, it's one of the easiest things I've ever done. And I actually really enjoy doing the milk testing every month. Now, if you remember, Tilly already earned her milking star in 2020, but the reason that we're still testing her is so we can see how her milk changes over the years and also to just get back data to see if we've improved in her daughters. So Tilly, as tiny as she is, is still holding out strong as the top milker on our farm. She consistently produces almost four pounds of milk a day, which equals to about eight cups or two quarts. So little Tilly, she's a powerhouse. Good job, Tilly. Don't hang out with everybody today. Be nice. Fern is Tilly's daughter, and I know I give her a lot of heck about her teats because they point out and make it a little bit harder to milk, but she is a powerhouse. She's got a beautiful udder, and she has pretty high production. So she's giving us about three pounds of milk a day, which is about six cups. We made sure and bred her to Zorro because Zorro has the genetics of better teat placement in his lines. So we're hoping that we corrected that little teat problem and in little Rose, she will have her mom's powerhouse build, lots of milk production, and then better teats. Okay, Fern, all done. Have a good day. Hazel is new to our farm. She's my friend's goat that we decided to end up purchasing so that we could bring some of her genetics into the herd. She's been lower on milk. Now, some of that could be due to her having a singleton, but most goats even out and are pretty comparable whether they have one baby or four babies. So what we'd like to see is her be able to meet that demand and be up to breed standard. Right now, she's only producing about two pounds of milk a day, which comes out to about four cups or a little bit over four cups. I'd like to see her closer to Fern's level. She definitely has the capacity for it. And on her first milk test, she did hit that. So I'm thinking in the summer when we get the nice cuts of alfalfa, she will do a lot better. Okay, come on, Hazel. Bye. You did great today. Little Tatum is a first freshener, so we always give her a little break on that. 
In first timers, or what we call in the goat world, first fresheners, we just want to see a good foundation. And she has that. She has a nice, high, tight udder and really well positioned teats. So I'm happy. I don't know if she'll hit her milking star this year since she produces a little bit under two pounds a day, which is a little bit under four cups for a whole day. But she's been really great on the stand. She's learning the routine. She doesn't kick. And so I'm really excited to see how she does next year. I think next year will definitely be her year. Okay, Tatum. Come on. Oh, you're ready to go. Bye. Have a good day. So that's it. We send the samples into the lab and keep going throughout the year. Hopefully by the end of the year in the fall, we'll know which one of them earned their milking star. Okay, it's the next day. We're gonna take down the fence and let the bucks in. Eventually we're gonna turn this into a gate, but right now we're just taking it down. All Box. right. Look it. <laughs> Come on. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Stop biting. <laughs> Come on. What are you talking about? They're mad for joy. They're going to go back. <laughs> Look at these geese. Wow. They're going to get mad at you probably. Uh oh. <laughs> We're gonna stop by the ladies. Look at that. You'll learn to love them. This part we haven't put the small fencing up yet so they can stick their heads through <laughs> and love on Luna. Uh oh. <laughs> he doesn't care. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? I'm scratching my... Yeah, it feels good to him. Oh, uh, scratch the back. He's like, all right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts when they get to the back part. <laughs> Don't scratch that back part. <laughs> <laughs> well, our hope is that the bugs kind of, you know, yeah. stay on their side. And the geese get this area. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. Wow, uh -oh, Lydia. Pauline doesn't care at all. Sorrel's a little more cautious. <laughs> They're like, stay away from our nest. You guys have plenty of space now. Oh, that's good. That was a good one. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, the bucks don't care about the geese at all. They just love all the extra space. As you guys know, the original reason why we brought the geese here is so that they can be alerts for us. They can alarm us if a coyote comes by. So while it would be fun to have goslings, at the same time, we're not necessarily going to really try to get them to breed and produce babies because we don't really need to have a whole farm full of geese here. It's not really probably wise. So we're glad that we can have a nice big space for them and have something for them to play in. A little bit of water can't hurt, but for the most part, we're okay with them just being companions and um, being a good alarm system for us. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright
So I've got about half of my garden planted, a little bit more over here, but I accidentally left a tomato plant all winter and it just so happens that we had a mild winter so now we have tomatoes. I could not believe when I saw this. The plant itself froze but we have all of these beautiful tomatoes. <laughs> That's crazy to me. So even though you think you were lazy, you weren't lazy, you just had to wait about a year since you planted them to get some more tomatoes. 2 a.m. in the car playing our favorite song. Turn it up, windows down, we sing along. The summer you know it's a good day when there are beans cooking in the kitchen. I love me some homemade bean burritos. Uh, my family isn't the biggest fan, <laughs> but that's too bad because I'm the cook and I want it. We're gonna start by making a homemade salsa from the happy surprise of tomatoes that we found in the garden today. We'll start by charring the onions and tomatoes so they get nice and roasted. Then we're gonna dump everything into the blender. We've got the tomatoes and onions, the green chilies, some garlic, then the cilantro and green onions. We'll blend it up and this will make the perfect dip for our bean burritos. I'm sure there's a more authentic way to make refried beans, but I just take our cooked beans, add some of the liquid that they've been cooking in and blend it up. <laughs> one by one, I'll warm the tortillas and wrap them up like a professional. I mean, is there really anything better than a homemade bean burrito? I don't think so. So it's a very simple dinner tonight, but one of my favorites. So hopefully this inspires you to get some beans cooking in your house, even if your family doesn't like it. That's just too bad. Well, it looks like it's working out. The geese are over on their side and the bucks <laughs> are over on their side. Just walking around, enjoying the new space. All right guys, I think we solved all of our problems. Everything from here on out will be easy. We plan on adding a few more shade trees to that goose buck area and a few other little fun things. Hopefully in a week or so, we'll have new baby goats on the ground. So Olive um, will be watching her closely and hopefully seeing some progress. If you wanna watch the video where the geese and Luna definitely did not get along, click right here.